breakfast church this morning. Um, it's been a few weeks since we've been with you for one reason and another, but it's very lovely to be back. So Simon, do you want to tell us what we're looking at today? So we're going to look at the story of the disciples um, meeting the members of the High Council and the Pharisees and the Jew and other Jewish leaders. Uh, so that's what we're going to hear the story of and then I'm going to offer a short talk a bit later. Uh, and what's your name? Oh, I'm Mara, and I'm one of the hosts of Big Breakfast Church. And I'm Simon, I'm the other host of Big Breakfast Church, so we thought we'd just get that in as well, because um, that's the normal starting point. So uh, um, it's been that long since we've, uh, we've done it, you were out of routine. I've lost so. my mind, yeah. yeah. Um, and as ever, Big Breakfast Church, we'll explore the theme through songs, um, a talk, a game, prayers, um, half an hour of just praising God in a fun way. Yeah. So as we do each time we gather, we're going to just bless this time uh, by saying grace, uh, but we're also going to light um, this candle here uh, that represents Christ, reminding us that Jesus is with us at uh, this time, and it's Jesus that we've come to worship, uh, and so shall we bless this time together in the food that we are eating at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Okay. So let's pray. O Lord Jesus, bless our home and bless our meal. Give us strength to share everything with those who are in hunger and need. Amen. Amen. So now it's time for our first song and we shall see you shortly. Enjoy. Pump. 
So, we hope that song's got you all loosened up. Now it's time for our game. So this week, it's a bit of a tedious link really, um, we are going to play a game of higher or lower. Because the disciples went and up against, if you like, um, and you'll find out a bit more about that in the story in a bit, against the High Council. So that is the tedious link. We're playing higher or lower because the disciples met the High Council. Anyway, most of you will know how to play higher or lower, but just in case you don't, um, we've got a pack of cards here, and I will um, turn over the top card once I've given them a bit of a shuffle, and then Mara and you at home will need to decide whether or not the next card is going to be higher or lower than the card that you have seen. And how many rounds are we doing? I think we can do three rounds. Well, as in not turn over, we'll do five turnovers, but we'll do three separate games. Oh, okay. wow. So it can be That's quite a long, long game. Um, but we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll see how... And the, for the game we get. Ace is low. Ace, is, ace, ace is, one. is one. King is high. Okay. So ten jack, queen, king. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Got it? Yeah. I think I've taken all the jokers out. So uh, let's ooh, oh, no. throw the cards everywhere. It's an easy way to shuffle them, isn't it? Let's just see if I can do this. A bit of showing off. Beautiful. Right, um, so the first card is a king. So that well, should be an I, easy start for you all. I don't know about all of you, but I am going to say lower. You're going to say lower. Okay. Given that the king is the highest card. And you would be correct with a three. So, what do you think, higher or lower? Higher. Higher than a three. What are you saying at home? Ooh, a four. That's very close. Higher or lower than a four? I'm going to go higher again. Higher? Six. So if you can get one more, you win this first round. If you don't get it, I win. Higher. Higher than a six. What are you saying at home? Higher or lower? And it is... King. So, round one, tomorrow. Thank you. So, second round. Go a bit quicker if we can this time. So, got a seven. That's a great one from my perspective. Right in the middle. Higher or lower than a seven? Lower. So you're going lower. What are you doing at home? Oh, King. You won that one then. So I win that one. That was a very quick round, that one. So... Okay, so starting again, third round. Starting card is a nine. Great card. It's not a great card, no. So higher or lower than a nine? Lower. Lower than a nine. Oh, it's a queen. He's won again. I'm in one. Should we have another go? Because those two rounds have been a bit quick, haven't they? Well, two more rounds. Then. Yeah, two more rounds. But yeah, let's go to five. So if I win the next one, I've won. Yeah. Okay, so we're starting off with a six. It's another, not another great card for you. <laughs> Competitive nature's coming out. Higher. Higher than a six. Are you saying higher than a six at home? An eight. Higher or lower than an eight? Higher. Higher than an eight? And oh. it's a five. So, three, three, one to me. Well done. Thank you. I mean, I didn't do a lot other than turn the cards <laughs> over, but, you know, thank you. I'll take well, that. The house always wins. I wonder how you all did at home. Um, anyway, it's time for our story now, isn't it? So sit back and enjoy the story, and then I'll see you on the other side. See you in a bit. Stories of the Bible. The Apostles and the High Council. These are the apostles. Hello. They followed Jesus during his time on earth. See ya. After he went to heaven, 
Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be their helper. Then the apostles spread the good news about Jesus everywhere they went. The apostles performed many miracles and healed the sick. They met regularly in the temple in Jerusalem, and many came to believe in Jesus. Huh. All this made the Jewish high priest and his officials very jealous, so they arrested the apostles and put them in jail. But an angel of the Lord came in the night Whoa. and opened the gate of the jail. The angel told them to go to the temple and tell people about Jesus. Got it. So at daybreak, the apostles went to the temple and told people about Jesus as the angel told them to. Meanwhile, the high priest and his officials called together a meeting of the high council. They sent the guards to bring the apostles out of jail, but when they went to the jail, they were gone. Wait, what? They returned to the council and reported that the men were gone. Guess what? Then someone arrived and announced that the men who were in jail were standing in the temple, teaching people. Go get them! The captain went with his temple guards and arrested the apostles. Come on, you. They brought them before the high council. The high priest said, We gave you strict orders never again to teach in this man's name. Um, yeah, but... But Peter and the apostle said, We must obey God rather than any human authority. They told Jesus' story that he was raised from the dead after they hung him on the cross and that now he was in heaven. They told him that Jesus did all these things so that people of Israel would turn to God and be forgiven for their sins. This made the high council furious, <laughs> and they decided to kill the apostles. But one Pharisee named Gamaliel stood up <clears throat> and ordered that the men be sent outside the council for a while. Then he warned his fellow Jewish leaders that killing the apostles might bring more trouble than good. He advised them to leave the apostles alone. That's a good point. The other Pharisees saw his point and accepted his advice. They called the apostles in and had them beat up, but they didn't kill them. They ordered them to never speak in the name of Jesus, and then they let them go. The apostles left the high council happy that God thought them worthy to suffer for preaching the name of Jesus. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they continue to teach and preach this message. Jesus is the Messiah. I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, that story particularly kind of brought to mind three different themes uh, for me as I was watching it. And I just want to unpack some of those themes for you now. And the first thing is the confidence that we have in talking about Jesus. In the story we, we hear that the the High Council tell the Apostles that they're not allowed to talk about Jesus but even though they are told they can't do it, they're even put in prison, they're beaten because of it, uh, the compulsion that the Apostles have to go and talk about Jesus and the life transforming impact they that Jesus had on their lives as well as others um, was so important to them that they wanted to go and share uh, who Jesus was with others. And it just got me thinking about the difficulty that we have in talking about Jesus, whether or not that's because we are embarrassed or um, we're worried about what other people might think, or we just don't have the confidence in ourselves um, to talk about who Jesus is and why we might have a relationship with him, but also why we go to church. And yet they're the kind of questions that people want to um, hear from us. Uh, and I think there's also an expectation that from people outside of the church, particularly that if you're a Christian, then you should talk about God and you should talk about Jesus. Because actually, if you're not talking about them, why do you believe in them? And I think that's a real challenge for us in Christians today. 
How often do we not want to talk about Jesus to friends or family because we're worried about their response? Or when we are in our work context, there are some situations where we can't talk about our faith. But yet there are opportunities normally when people say, well, what have you been doing this weekend or what did you do last night? And if you've done something, you've either been to church or been involved in a group, it's so easy to say, actually, I was at church on Sunday and uh, that just can open a door uh, to talk about who Jesus is and talk about our own faith uh, that we have. And I think it's a real challenge for us that we get caught in this um, situation where we feel we can't talk about it or that and we tend to put those blockages in ourselves. It's not like the High Council uh, where they have directly said you can't do that. Um, we should have confidence in talking about our faith and about who Jesus is to other people. And we have a freedom to do so. And that leads me to the second uh, point uh, that came to mind when I watched the video. And that was about the persecuted church. Across the world there are people who are not free to worship God in a public way. They are not free to talk about who Jesus is to them uh, and to others. Um, because if they do, um, their lives are at risk, their families' lives are at risk, and they may be put in prison, they may be beaten and even killed because of their faith. And over 4,000 people last year died because of their faith in Jesus Christ around the world and because they were persecuted uh, in nations where Christianity is not considered to be um, acceptable. And it's really interesting if you look as an organisation called Open Doors who support persecuted Christians around the world and they've got a top 50 list of nations uh, where particularly they've identified um, being a Christian is a really difficult place to be. And one of those places is Afghanistan, uh, number two on their list, I think. And with everything going on in Afghanistan at the moment, it just brings to mind the challenges of being a Christian in places around the world uh, where perhaps Christianity is not uh, considered to be the first faith or religion. And so we've got a responsibility, I think, as Christians to be praying and trying to support um, our brothers and sisters around the world who have a faith in Jesus but are not able to live it out in the way we are in the West uh, but also to be um, supporting them in maybe financially or particularly organisations like Open Doors, there are others as well, working with persecuted churches and Christians to try and um, help them in their situation. So we are very blessed in the West to be able to go on a Sunday or whatever day of the week it is to worship God. We are very fortunate we can talk about Jesus and yet we're not very good at doing that. And I think we owe it to ourselves but we also and to Jesus, but we also owe it to those Christians around the world who are not able to talk about their faith but would desire nothing more than to do so. Those that can't worship God because they are concerned about um, what might happen to them and their family. So that's the second thing. And the third thing that came to mind when I watched the story was when the apostles are told that they can't go and talk about Jesus, they feel so compelled to that they do it anyway uh, and they stand up for what they believe in. Um, and I just wonder whether or not there are things that God is placing on our hearts as individuals but also as churches. Um, that we ought to be standing up for, the injustices of society, which is one of the five marks of mission. How do we stand up for the um, the p things that we think are wrong in um, our country and in the world? Think about um, uh, Greta and her um, call to young people to challenge the issues of climate change. Um, or you've got Marcus Rashford uh, stepping out to challenge um, our national government um, in the response to food poverty and particularly um, food in school holidays. And we as a church have an opportunity to stand up and challenge the unjust structures of society in our local community by contacting our MP um, and responding in, in whatever ways we might be able to to um, maybe 
practically by um, helping the food bank or, or other organisations to respond to the needs in the local community. But we can also be challenging national and international issues, um, whether or not it be climate change or poverty um, and other ways. And that might be through um, completing forms and, sent p and petitions to send in um, and there are lots of organisations that do that, such as Tear Fund, um, World Vision and others who are looking at that. Or there might be protests and other things that we might want to get behind to support and just, but also to kind of say that we do not agree with the way things are going. So there are those three things. Firstly, um, how do we respond to talking about Jesus and sharing our faith when either we don't feel confident to do so or we feel that we're worried about what other people may think. The second one is how can we support and be praying for the persecuted church? And the third is how can we challenge the unjust structures of society? As Christians, we have a responsibility to, to look at all of those things and to try and respond accordingly. I wonder which one of those you might want to take forward and think about a little bit more um, over the coming days and week. A challenge for you and a challenge for me. Amen. Thank you for that, Simon. You're welcome. So now it's time for our Holy Spirit time. So this is something we do every time on Big Breakfast Church. And it's just taking a few minutes out to open ourselves up to allow God to move in our lives. It's just about being open to having him present in our lives. And we say one of the possibly oldest prayers, just come Holy Spirit. If you want to, you can put your hands out. You don't have to. And we just, for a few moments, wait on God. So, come Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. So now it's time for our prayers. And in his talk, Simon picked out three things um, that we're just going to focus our prayers on today. So the first one is about feeling that it's difficult to talk about Jesus in our own situations for whatever reason, whether that be that we feel shy or embarrassed or scared how people might respond to us. So, first of all, let's pray about that. Lord Jesus, thank you that you see us and you know us, Lord. Thank you that you know our hearts. And it can be so scary to talk about you in this world where we worry about our, our image and what other people may think of us. But, Lord, Thank you that we do not have to do this in our own strength, Lord. Give us a fire in our hearts to talk about you to others, to share the good news of Jesus with those people we meet, Lord. And fill us with your spirit and give us the words to say and the opportunities. In your holy name, Amen. So the second thing we're going to look think about or pray for is those Christians across the world who are persecuted for their faith, who, who speaking out literally is a death sentence for them. Um, so we're just going to remember them in our prayers. Lord Jesus, there are places across the world where it is dangerous to say your name. And we don't even begin to know where all those places are and, and those people whom that affects. But you know. You know every single place where people are risking their lives to worship and follow you, Lord. Thank you for their strength, Lord, and for their commitment to you. And we just pray now your protection on them. In a moment of silence, Think about a place that maybe comes to mind where there are people being persecuted for their faith in God.
We lift these places up to you and these people, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Put your protection around them. And thank you that we all have our eternal hope in you. Amen. Amen. And then finally, we think about speaking out for people who are in need um, and for other sort of social action things. And while I've been thinking about this, there's been a verse that's really come to mind from um, Proverbs 31, verse 8. And um, so as a prayer, I'm just going to say the lines from a song that are based on this verse. Lord Jesus, I pray for all of us that we will speak out for those who have no voices, that we will stand up for the rights of all the oppressed, that we will speak truth and justice, defend the poor and the needy, and lift up the weak. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mara. It's now time for our song, isn't it? Yeah. So, uh, if you want to uh, get to your feet and join in with the singing and the actions, and we'll see you in a moment.
Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that song. Sadly, we are getting towards the end of Big Breakfast Church for this week. We hope you've enjoyed uh, joining us and spending time with us. We've we particularly enjoyed being with you. Um, as ever, if you want to kind of continue thinking about the theme that we've been thinking about today, uh, do have a look on the website for the um, activity menu. But you may want to just be thinking a little bit more about some of those things, particularly that Mara brought up in the prayers and, and I spoke of a little bit in the talk. Um, you know, be thinking and looking into maybe doing some research about some of the places in the world where persecution is happening for Christians around the world. Uh, you may also want to be thinking about how you might respond to some of the injustices uh, of society um, and whether or not there's a, a physical action or whether or not you can just uh, be praying into those situations, whatever it might be. Uh, and also remind yourself of the story and, and maybe go and look at it in different ways, retell it uh, and then join with the prayers and other activities that are on those menus. Lovely. Yeah. So, yes, sadly, that is the end. It's just time for us to say our blessing. Thank you. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might have learned it by now. Well, we'll get there in the end. So, may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Have a good couple of weeks, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.